Welcome back, guys. I'm glad to see all your comments. Remember that you can still send questions, and Haley will go through them in the last 15 minutes of the show. Remember to send questions only, only about the probability that we've been doing, and we'll be sure to answer them for you. Go ahead, Haley. <laughs> Thanks, Kaleka. <laughs> okay, let's move on to question two. I hope that this is all making sense, and I'm hoping that you can conquer probability. Well, What's the probability of you answering the questions correctly? Well, hopefully with us, and if you tune in every week, it yeah. will increase. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so question two. We're looking at two bags. Each contains three items. So let's mark what these bags contain. They one has three marbles, and the other has three cubes. In each bag, the colors are green, red, and blue. Two items are drawn at the same time, one from each bag. That's important, so we're taking out one marble and one cube. So, first question says, draw a tree diagram to show all the possible outcomes when the items are drawn. Now, I'm going to take a step back because I haven't actually shown you how to do a tree diagram, so this is when I'm going to do it now. A tree diagram is one way of determining all the possible outcomes. So, and it is one of the easiest ways to actually show that uh, all the possible outcomes. So, let's start. What we do is, for each event, we create a tree. And what we mean by tree is that we are looking at our first event. Okay, so let's do this together. Our first event is choosing a marble out of the one bag. So, in the bag, I had three different marbles. So this is why it's called a tree, because each one of these I'm going to refer to as branches. So I start off in the center of the page, and I create three branches because I've got three events. And each of these is a marble, and I had three different colors. So let's write the colors in. I had green, red, and blue. So I'm going to write it as a G, R, and B. Uh, green, red, and blue, and I know that that's my marble. Now, this is the most crucial part of the tree diagram. For the second event and the third event and thereafter, we are going to create a tree and with branches for each one of our branches. So my second event should look very similar because I have three events, I've got three outcomes, and I've got three different colors. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it onto each one of the branches. So if I choose a green marble, I can still choose, maybe I should do this in a different color. Let's change color here. Okay, so if I have a green marble, I can still choose a green cube, a red cube, or a blue cube. But if I choose a red marble, I can have all three events occurring. I'll have a green, a red, and a blue. And finally, if I get a blue one, I can still have a green, a red, and a blue. So what's really important is for each branch of the tree, you need to allocate all the different outcomes. And if I had to now go again, maybe there was another bag, each one of these branches, I would draw the outcomes again. So how many outcomes have I got? Well, it's how many branches did I end up with? And if I count them, I'll see that there were nine branches in total. But I just want to show you how to read the outcomes. What we do is, I'm going to try to do this with a highlighter. Let's see if this is going to work. Don't have an, okay, no, we'll try with a different color. So I start at the center and I draw a line going to green. So I've got a green marble and then I go down one of these branches and a green. So I've got a green marble and a green cube. So remember my first one was marbles and my second one was cubes. Then I go back to the beginning. And I go green because I want to color in every single line. So I go green and then I've got red. So that's green and red. Back to the beginning, green and blue. So that's green and blue. And I carry on doing this until every single one of my lines has been colored in or highlighted. Use colors, it makes it interesting. Okay, so I'm going to go red, draw a line across and green. So we've got red and green red and red 
and then red and blue. Finally, I've got blue and green. I've got blue and red. And lastly, blue. Oops, we moved our blue. And blue. And those are now all my possible outcomes. So let me see if I've answered the question correctly. It said, draw a tree, tree, down to show, tree diagram to show all the possible outcomes when the items are drawn. And I've done that. I've got all my possible outcomes. There are nine of them. And I've got every single combination that's possible. So let's move on to the next part of the question and see what it says. What is the probability of drawing a green cube and a red marble? Well, now I've already done all my probabilities. Let's go to the page before. I want a, no, let me go back. What did I want? I wanted a green cube and red marble. So I'm going to go down here and see. I want a green cube and a red marble. So there's my red marble. So let's get a different color. Let's try orange now. I'm going to look for my favorable outcome. I'm looking for a red marble and a green cube. So there's the only one and I can mark it and I can go through all my outcomes and see how many I've got well in this case I can see there's only one so what's the probability of that occurring it is one out of nine now from a tree diagram it's really easy for me to actually calculate this it's my favorable outcome there was only one out of my total possible outcomes there was nine let me quickly show you how we would do this if we had to look at it mathematically kind of with the either or one that I showed you earlier what's my probability of getting a green cube well my green cube was in actual fact there were three different colors so green was one out of three and I'm going to multiply my probability of a red marble there was also one out of three and you see, even if you need to do this on your calculator, although I don't know if you do, we multiply the top, 1 times 1 is 1, and we multiply the bottom is 9, and it's the same answer. Easier to do it from a tree diagram? Certainly. But can you do it mathematically? You can. And remember, that's that there's always more than one way of doing something. So we've got our answer. What's the probability of now getting two blue items? Well, we can go back to our diagram, our tree diagram, and see, well, blue diagrams, the blue, there was only this one. So again, one out of nine. So let's put our answer in to our question. Two blue items was also one out of nine. And again, we could have done it mathematically. Hey, I hope now that you can draw a tree diagram. Most important thing is just to practice. I always give my kids, I always give my kids when I teach them this, I say to them, well, what's the probability of playing a soccer match? Because I think they can all relate to soccer. Yeah. <laughs> and what's the probability of the outcome of a soccer match? Well, you can win, you can lose, or you can draw. draw yeah. So you've got three outcomes. Then I say, well, okay, if you play two games, mm -hmm. then what do we do? And if you play three games, and it starts getting yeah. very, very much bigger. And our tree diagram kind of expands and grows, but it's really a nice exercise, yeah, and is. I enjoy doing it with soccer. Yeah. So maybe you can practice that and see what happens with three games. How many? Maybe we should put that as a challenge. Maybe we should. Maybe. How many outcomes would there be if you three yeah. soccer games? Yeah. I think let's post that as a challenge. Okay. So let's move on to our next question, though. While we're doing that. Okay. Question three says Samantha works as a call center in Grey Town in KwaZulu Natal. She would like to relocate to Johannesburg in Gauteng. The table below shows the number of people that relocated, that means moved, between five provinces in South Africa between January 2006 and December 2009. Now, you might say to yourself, I'm giving you this table, and you might say to yourself, well, really, what does this have to do with probability? And every now and again, we give you probability that doesn't seem like it is probability, but you'll see from the questions that it is. But what is my motto? Whenever we get a table, we need to understand the table. So before we carry on with our questions, I want to go through the table. We're looking at the number of people that relocated between the five provinces. Which five provinces? We've got Eastern Cape, Free State, Gauteng, KwaZulu-Natal, and Limpopo. So 
These are the provinces people lived in in 2006, and these are the provinces they now stay in. So if I had to, example, look at Eastern Cape, in 2006, these people lived in the Eastern Cape, but now these 14,700 people live in the Free State. And these people live in Gauteng, and those live in KwaZulu-Natal, and those live in Limpopo. And for each of the provinces, we've got where they relocated to and how many. So I hope you understand that table. Let's see what the questions are. How many people relocated from Limpopo to Gauteng? Well, we need to find from Limpopo, and we're going to look for Gauteng, and we're going to find it over there. So it was 2, 000, uh, 21,000 people. 21,000 people relocated from Limpopo to Gauteng. Let's read the next part of the question. Okay. Calculate the total number of people who relocated to Gauteng from the other four provinces. So we need to calculate the total number that relocated to Gauteng. So we've got two ways of looking at Gauteng. Are we going to be looking at that one? No, those are the people that were in Gauteng and relocated out. We are actually going to be looking at those numbers. So we need to add up those numbers. And now my calculation needs to come out. calculator needs to come out because I can't add such big numbers by head. So 9, uh, 93,400 plus, we've got 57,500 plus 117,100. And remember to check that you've actually entered the correct numbers, especially with big numbers. Make sure that what you're entering on your calculator and what actually says in your paper are the same thing. And we get an answer of 289,000 people. I wonder why they're relocating to Gauteng. Because it's the best province. <laughs> <laughs> 289,000 people. <laughs> Well, there you go. According to Katlejo, it's the best the province, best. and that's mm -hmm. why we relocated. <laughs> so, okay, let's move to our next part of our question. So far, kind of no probability, but I think we're building up to it. And now it says, calculate the difference between the number of people who relocated from KwaZulu-Natal to Gauteng and the number of people who relocated from Gauteng to KwaZulu-Natal. So we need to do two things. We need to find the numbers, and then we need to find the difference. So first we're going to look at the numbers. So we're going to say Gauteng to KwaZulu-Natal, and we're going to say KwaZulu-Natal to Gauteng. So let's find Gauteng to KwaZulu-Natal. There's Gauteng to KwaZulu-Natal was 56,400. And KwaZulu-Natal to Gauteng was this bigger number, 117,100. And now we just need to find the difference between the two. So we're going to use our calculator again. We've got 117,100 minus 56,400, and we get 60,700. So it was 60,700. What's really important in a calculation like this is not to just give us an answer. Actually show all your steps of the calculation, because remember you get method marks for things that you've done, and to also explain to the examiner that you know what you're doing. So in actual fact, what I've left out of this calculation is I should have said, well, I needed to take these two, these two and minus them. So I need to actually see that in your calculations, that we're actually minusing the two, and that that's how we got our answer. So let's see now, I think we go on to our probability questions. What is the probability that a person chosen at random has relocated from the free state to Gauteng? From the free state to Gauteng. Well, what we need to do in this case is we need to actually find the person that is relocated from free state to Gauteng is that number. And if you can see that clearly, let's do it in a different color, okay? So I've got 57,500 people have relocated from the free set. So that's my favorable outcome. So my answer 
and now I've got the wrong colour. My answer is 57,500. And I'm going to divide it by my favourable outcome. And that is my total number of people that have relocated. The entire lot of people. And I'm going to write it in as my total number. Total number. Because I think that we don't need to sit and calculate them all. And I don't know what I did with my answers. So we're looking at the total number of add everything up. So we add all up. That should, that should be all right to explain. <laughs> and my favorable outcome was the person has moved to the free state and it's out of the total possible. Next part of our question is, what is the probability that a person chosen at random has relocated from Gauteng? Well, again, we would now add up everybody that's relocated from Gauteng. So that lot of numbers divided by my total. So we can add those up quickly. It won't take us too long. 31,500 plus 31,000. Okay. Plus, and I've lost the numbers, 56,400. I think I might remember them. 56,400 plus, and I think it was lots of threes. Triple three, double zero. No, need a calculator. <laughs> B three three zero zero. Okay, so our total is one hundred and fifty two thousand two hundred. That's my favorable outcome, and then we're going to do it again divided by my total. So in this case, we had one hundred fifty two thousand two hundred. Was that the number I had on the calculator? I think I know. One hundred fifty. Oh, <laughs> Paying attention, <laughs> and we're going to be dividing that by our total. And again, I'm going to tell you what that total is just by the total. So that's our favourable outcome. I think at this point, maybe we should have a little bit of a break. Maybe. I think maybe. we've done a bit much. Yeah, we have. <laughs> <laughs> I know you guys' minds are probably getting bogged up by the numbers. <laughs> so take a little bit of a breather and we'll see you after the break. <laughs>